in this video i'll be walking you through my process of how i paint realistic looking eyes in my sketchbook using oil paints and disclaimer i am very much a beginner and uh, this is just my process and what works for me the best I really like using these tiny sketchbooks for my studies like eyes and stuff like that because the dimensions are really small making it easier for me to fill in the pages without actually making too much effort. Moving on to the sketching, I use this cross like guidelines to position my subject uh, right at the center of my page and then I begin sketching out the general shape of the eye according to my reference while also maintaining the shape of shadows and highlights and just roughly sketching them out. One important thing to keep in mind before painting with oil paints on a paper is that you have to prime your paper first with an acrylic primer so that the paint actually stays on top of the paper and not get absorbed into the paper itself. I really want to keep this video as short and informative as possible so I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse of how I mix my skin tones. For the base color, I use some vermilion hue along with burnt sienna and flake white. From here, you can adjust the amount of flake white in your mixture, uh, making more and more paler skin tones. And you should also keep in mind there is nothing called a skin tone because their skin is composed of many different colors like pinks, blues, purples, greens and yellows. So you should know to adjust your base tone to whatever shade that you see on your reference picture. For example, let's just say that you see a yellow tone on your reference picture. Now you just take some of the lemon yellow and mix it with the base tone. And you have gotten yourself a yellow tinted skin tone. This also goes for any other tones like purples, blues, even greys. So these are the lighter shades of the skin tone. For the dark ones, I usually restrain myself from using straight up black from the tube. Instead, I use the mixture of Persian Blue, Elizabeth Crimson and Burnt Sienna. Sometimes or usually most of the times, I just go in heavy handed with the Persian Blue. And blue being a strong color entirely overpowers the mixture making it look cold. Uh, to bring down the coolness of the mixture, I usually use warmer tones like cadmium yellow or uh, vermilion hue. In this uh, case, I used a bit of uh, vermilion hue and it did the job. You probably have seen this technique of uh, painting from dark to light like a million other times and that's what I do too. And for uh, eye studies like these, the darker tones usually fall on the upper lash line and the eyebrows, following the next darker tones on the lids. From here, you don't overthink things and just put down the colors that you see on your reference picture, even if you think that does not belong there. To make it more clear, you see a cow herd in this picture in a field and when you think about the shadow casted by these cows, your brain automatically tells you it's some shade of grey, which is absolutely not true. According to this picture, you can clearly see the shadow is a darker shade of the field underneath. Recently, I have been really obsessed with painting eyes. The reason why I think I love it so much is because number one, it's really easy, really quick. At the same time, it's really complicated to paint an eye. Reason two being at the skill level that I am at, uh, it is not uh, feasible for me to paint a full on portrait every single day. Painting eyes really helps me keep in touch with my practice without actually putting in a lot effort. And the last point is for some strange reason people really really like watching eye painting videos.
One thing that really confused me in the beginning while painting eyes was uh, how the heck am I supposed to paint the eyebrows? Am I supposed to paint each individual hairs? And turns out, the answer is no, I don't have to do that. You just have to first block in the colors that you see in the reference picture on the eyebrows and then pull down those colors into the skin and the color of the skin into the eyebrows giving it a fuzzy fluffy look just like an eyebrow. Now for the whites of the eyeball, it is definitely not pure white. It is three dimensional and there is a lot of shades involved. So absorb your reference picture and put those colors down. And finally for the pupils, uh, I am not sure if it's called the pupil or the iris, uh, I don't know, either way you get it. This is my favorite part about painting an eye because this pupil could be of any color regardless of the color of the skin surrounding it. We can really use this to our advantage and create really contrasting and interesting looking pieces like this one in this example as you can see the skin around the eyes is really saturated and leaning towards pinkish tones and the pupil itself is a bluish turquoise making it look really pleasant and pleasing to the eyes. And definitely do not forget the highlights. The highlights are the most important aspect of a painting which really brings everything together as you can see already how much better it looks. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned a thing or two today and subscribe for more videos like this.